A little over three months ago, I bought this house for $310,000 in a neighborhood where all the houses sell for around five to $700,000 or even more. I decided to put in about $120,000 worth of renovation to make it a little less like a haunted house or a time capsule straight out of the 1980s. Now fast forward to today. Most of the renovation is completed and I'm going to show you guys what I did with this house, how I did it, did I actually ruin this house based on the comments I've been getting, and what the house looks like now, all the befores and afters. If you're new here, hi, my name is Gary Gao, I flipped over 100 houses, currently holding a real estate portfolio of just under $10 million. Decided to start a YouTube channel about a half a year ago to post helpful and interesting videos along my journey to inspire more people. If that's something that interests you, be sure to subscribe to this channel, please also give this video a thumbs up and comment below for the YouTube's algorithm's sake. Alright, this house is located in one of the most desirable neighborhoods in Alabama, where you can still find some good old charming houses with tons of character that are not in a cookie cutter subdivision with an HOA, where you can pretty much stick your hand out of your kitchen window and touch your neighbor's house. And the cherry on top is, this house sits on top of a ridge with some really nice views. Like I mentioned earlier, this house carried a lot of untouched characters from the 1980s when I first bought it. When I first posted about how I'm going to renovate it, I got a lot of hate by a lot of you. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read through these comments. But hey, you can't please everyone and make everyone in the world happy all at the same time. For example, if you walk up to 100 people and ask them what color they want their exterior bricks to be painted, 50 are going to tell you they like it white. 40 are going to say the natural brick color, and the remaining 10 are going to tell you something crazy like purple, green, or pink. This house had an indoor plant garden, indoor balcony overlooking the sunken living room with 30-foot vaulted ceiling, sparkling popcorn ceiling, a dated kitchen in 2024 standards, kind of odd, separate his and hers master bathrooms, aka a red flag to a potential failed marriage, also a full and already pre-plumbed daylight basement. When I first bought this house, it had three bedrooms, a pair of master bathrooms, and a hallway Jack and Jill bathroom. I decided to close the hallway access to the Jack and Jill bathroom. Come on, you really want to lock three doors behind you every time you go do your business? However, a hall bath is a must for a house at this price range. So we combined the original separate his and hers master bathroom into one true master bathroom, used some of the square footage from the original his master bathroom, and framed up a dedicated potter room slash a half bath. I mean seriously, if a married couple can share the same house, same bath, they can share the same toilet, same shower, same bathroom. Otherwise, you probably should have said no to that expensive 5 karat carbon stone that he had to finance to get you. Living room. I've gotten a lot of hate on leveling out this sunken living room. Just look at these comments. Yes, it was a nice feature, but like I said earlier, you just can't make everyone in the world happy all at the same time. Leveling out the living room not only makes the house seem bigger, more connected, but also more age-friendly too. If you really like stairs, go get a gym membership. Living room is where you get lazy laying on the couch and do nothing. I've also gotten a lot of comments about do not line wash that fireplace. Well, would you just take a look at that? I think it turned out okay. Next time, think twice before you judge. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, just don't say it. For the wood cedar beams around the living room, I thought I could just bleach the stain off. Boy, I was wrong. Ended up having to pay a pretty penny to stain them into a darker color in order to cover the water stains caused by the previous leaky roof. Yep, definitely didn't budget that in. It did make the house look so much better, but it also made my painter's bank account look so much better too. Now kitchen. I took everything down and started everything from scratch, pretty much redesigned the entire kitchen. Recessed lights, gas stove, white shaker cabinets with champagne bronze cabinet poles. Added another row of cabinets for additional storage. There is no such a thing as too much storage in a kitchen. Also a sitting area on the other side, so your husband can be a backseat chef critiquing your cooking techniques while you cook. Kind of make you second guess the decision of combining the separate his and hers master bathrooms now, huh? A pro tip, when it comes to kitchen countertops, there are usually three options when it comes to solid stone options. Marble is a natural stone, super expensive and it stains like a sponge. You gotta pay someone to seal it once a year. Otherwise, anything like red wine, soy sauce, spaghetti sauce, or even blinker fluid will leave a stain in your marble. And if you do get a stain on your marble, it is a job to get it off. How do you get it off? Hawk to and spit on that thing. Just kidding. Soak it in acetone for over 24 hours and scrub it with a microfiber towel. 
Now, between granite and quartz, granite is more heat resistant than quartz. Quartz is more stain resistant than granite. It is really up to your personal preference at this point. For me personally, I like quartz over granite. Yep, I take quartz for granite. Uh, the dad joke though. For these two columns, yes, I have thought about removing them, but pretty much half of the living room roof weight was sitting on these two posts. It cost way too much to remove them. LVR won't do the job here. You need a steel eye beam or a suspended concrete beam, which made me wish money grew on trees sometimes. Now basement. For a house at this price range, any families that can afford it will probably have more than two kids and probably want a dedicated guest room, music room, movie room, or home office. Plus, the basement is already pre-plumbed, meaning when the house was built, plumbing was already put in under the slab if someone decided to finish the basement one day. So it's really a no-brainer for me to make the decision to finish this basement. We added an extra large laundry room, a mechanical room, two bedrooms, a full bathroom, and a living room area. Look, if you don't need all this space, you can always rent it out or do Airbnb and a house hack for additional income to cover part of your mortgage. If you want to know more about how I finished my basement and my personal home and making over $30,000 a year renting it out on Airbnb, watch this video. Link down below as well. Now let's move to the outside. One thing I always look for when purchasing a house to renovate is a good backyard. A house could be a great opportunity on the interior, but if it has little to no backyard, it is not going to be as desirable and you will probably have a tough time selling it in the future. Families interested in buying a house this size want a decent backyard their kids and dogs can play in. Maybe build a treehouse connected to the main deck with a skywalker. <clears throat> Sorry, I meant a skywalk. Maybe put in a swimming pool one day, a garden, or even chickens. Yep, you heard me right, chickens. I honestly have no idea why everyone is so hyped about having chickens all of a sudden these days. This one acre backyard is perfect for all of that, and I didn't really have to do anything major to it, just some standard landscaping, cutting the grass, trimming the bushes to make the tree look taller, if you know what I mean. Hey hey. Huh? The house also has a gazebo off the back deck, which is the perfect reading nook while spying on your kids when they play in the backyard. A little over 3 months is how long it took me to finish this project, definitely a lot longer than my average projects. 2 months is my average turnaround time. To my defense, this was a big house. We originally had a budget of $120,000 for this renovation. But hey, name me a renovation project that went within the budget, finished on time, and the contractor did not call in sick or truck won't start on the days you really need him to show up. Go ahead and now wait. I thought the 8 year old HVAC unit was still good. Ended up having to replace the entire unit, especially since I ended up finishing the basement, which increased the square footage that needed to be heated and cooled. So we had to upsize it to a 5 ton unit from the original 3.5 ton unit. Well, that is an additional $8,200 that I did not factor in in my original budget. Roof. It was hard to tell how the roof was from afar while standing on the ground level, especially on these 30 year rated architectural shingles. I knew there were some stains on the ceiling when I first bought the house, but who would have guessed that the previous homeowner was totally okay living in a house with an actively leaking roof this entire time. I called my roofer for some additional repairs. Oh boy, after getting on top of that roof and taking a closer look at it, there was no way I could sleep at night if I tried to sell this house by just patching it and call it fixed. It needed a whole new roof bad. Just look at these photos. All the granules were pretty much gone. It was a good view up there though. A new roof cost me just a little over $10,000 which is another big ticket item that I did not factor in in my original budget. Neither did this additional parking pad for $5,400. At this point, I'm still working on the numbers and trying to figure out exactly how much I spent on everything, which in the next video, I'll have a detailed breakdown on exactly how much I spent on materials, labors, each trade, each category, and each section of the house. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. And just in case if you still haven't gotten tired of my accent yet, here are two more renovation videos for your YouTube binging. Adios.